why don't you just go ahead and turn that song into a prayer? Father, I need a miracle in my life. Go ahead and turn that song into a prayer. Father, I need a miracle in my life. I don't know how you will do it, but I need a miracle. I need a turnaround. I need a divine touch this morning. Lord, even as I tarry in your presence, send me a miracle. Send me a divine touch. <laughs> do something mighty, something glorious, something powerful, something new in my life, oh God. Don't let me worship in vain today. Don't let me gather in vain today. Lord, meet me at the point of my need. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please lift up that Bible very high unto the Lord. Just lift it high unto the Lord, wherever you may be, all over the world. Just lift up that Bible. And together we say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Uh, may I please ask that you remain standing if you can and open with me to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to read verse 27 to 29. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27 to 29. And this word, yet once more, signified the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire beloved this morning I have a message laid in my heart to share with you and it is titled when God shakes the heart when God shakes the heart Please, let's take this song. It's a, it's a very good hymn that the Lord laid in my heart yesterday as well. It says, in Christ alone. In Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm to the face and strong and storm. What height of love, what depth of peace, when he's a steel, when Oh, 
Father, we thank you for your reassuring words that nothing can pluck us out of your hands. As we go, Lord, into your word, please speak powerfully. Meet every one of us at the points of our needs. And as you shake the words, the word, Lord, the things that cannot be shaken, the kingdom of God that stands forever, and the truth that abides forever shall not be shaken in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Uh, I welcome every one of you in Nigeria, outside of Nigeria. This indeed has two parts to it. There's the challenging part. We have to do things in a different way. But there's also an exciting part of it that God is going to reach us even more powerfully than he has done before. And I pray that the hand of God will touch you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Please avoid any distractions and just pay attention to the word of God for you. Listen to the message and the message inside the message. God has a word for you as a person. And when you hear your word, you say a loud amen wherever you are, and you immediately turn it into prayers. I'm joining my faith with yours that even as you pray today, God will answer your prayers and make your joy full in Jesus' name. When God shakes the earth, many things happen. But as the Lord gives me opportunity this morning, I will share with you some of the things that happen when God shakes the earth. As it is doing now with coronavirus. Number one, when God shakes the earth, take care, but fear not. When God shakes the earth, take care, but fear not. In this period, so many people are so afraid, wondering are they going to survive? What does this mean for their business? Will they still have a job when this is over? with your family make it through coronavirus? Beloved, calm down. Remember the word of the Lord in Psalm 23, verse 4. Say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. No matter how dangerous coronavirus may be, the God whom we serve is bigger than coronavirus. It is time to be careful, but not fearful. Because fear is more dangerous than coronavirus. When you are afraid, you die quicker than when you are afflicted with coronavirus. Fear will destroy you physically. Fear will destroy you emotionally. Fear will destroy you spiritually. And that's why the Lord tells us in Psalm 46, verse 10, as we open to that passage together. Psalm 46, verse 10. Say, be still and know that I am God. See, in the midst of this coronavirus and pandemic, as they call it, the word of God unto you is be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. I pray for someone right now, wherever you may be, in this season, the power to be still, may God give unto you in Jesus' name. I pray that through this season, God himself will strengthen you and he shall see you through. 
Number two, when God shakes the earth, think deeply and avoid the counsel of the crowd. Think deeply and avoid the counsel of the crowd. There are so many self-appointed experts now telling you to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that, and that you'll be able to defeat coronavirus. Be careful, beloved. Be careful. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 tells us, Say, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Sound mind. When God is taking the earth, it is time to think deeply. It is time to apply the sound mind that God has given us. Simple. Wash your hands regularly. Wash your hands regularly. Apply hand sanitizers. Avoid hand shakes. Avoid hugging people. Avoid crowd. If you are sick, isolate yourself. Stay at home and contact your doctor. If you are sick and you start running to the hospital, before you get to the hospital, you will have infected more than 10 people. God has given us the sound mind. If you happen not to feel well, coronavirus or no coronavirus, you sit at home and contact your medical provider. Alternatively, you call 112. When you call 112, it will take you directly to the emergency center. And they can advise you what to do without you becoming a danger to your friends, to the, to, the, to the community. God has given us sound mind. Prayer is powerful. But prayer is not a substitute for common sense. Let me repeat that. Prayer is powerful. But prayer is not a substitute for common sense. That's why that passage says God has given us sound mind. I pray for somebody here that in this season of trials and tribulation, your sound mind will come alive in Jesus' name. There is a purpose in every pain. That's why for those who saw the video that I released, I said this is a great opportunity. This is a marvelous opening that every one of us must embrace with open hands and seek the face of God to open our eyes. Because in every pain, there is a purpose. I will repeat that. In every pain, there is a purpose. When God was dealing with the Israelites, they missed the purpose. They focused on the pain. And I'll read it to you so you can see. This is not the time for you to focus on the pain. This is the time for you and I to focus on the purpose. Number chapter 14, verse 2 to 4. Let's open it together. And you see what happens when your eyes are on the pain instead of on the purpose. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? 
or would God we have died in this wilderness? And wherefore, as the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, to fall by coronavirus, that our wives, our children should be a prey to coronavirus? Is it not better for us to return to Egypt? And then verse 4 says, And they said one to another. You know, I said, avoid the counsel of the crowd. Instead of going to Moses, their leader, and say, Moses, what is the purpose in this pain? Moses, what is God trying to tell us? Which is what you should be doing now. You listen to this message. Seek spiritual guidance. And ask God, what is the purpose in this coronavirus? They saw the pain. And they consulted among themselves. And the Bible said, let us, they said, let us make a captain. And let us return to, to Egypt. They prefer to go back to the place of bondage when the promised land is just after the pain. After coronavirus, there's going to be plenty of joy. There's going to be plenty of testimonies. There's going to be plenty of celebrations. But don't go back to Egypt. Please rise on your feet wherever you may be and say, Lord Jesus, Whatever crisis I am going through right now, coronavirus or any other crisis in my life, any other crisis in my life, don't let it take me back to Egypt. I know there is a purpose for every pain. Open my eyes, Lord, to know why I am going through some challenges in my life right now. Don't let me depart from you, oh God. Don't let me return to Egypt, the place of bondage. Cry to God. Let me go through the pain and be able to get to the promised land. I'm not going to run away from the pain, but I'm going to go through the pain into the promised land. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Number three, when God shakes the earth, things not profitable to your destiny are removed as God is shaking the heart right now you will suddenly notice that the things that are not important they start falling by the wayside all the dirty habits that we have will soon go away before coronavirus how many of us were washing our hands regularly how many of us we are applying hand sanitizer before coronavirus. Many people were dying, not of coronavirus, but because of bad hygiene. Many people died of laser fever. They died of di diarrhea because of bad hygiene. But coronavirus will teach them how to be clean. And they will stop dying of diarrhea. They will stop dying of laser fever. They will stop dying of other things that being dirty has caused them in the past. When God shakes the heart, the things that are not important to your destiny are removed. Another example. Many people that used to go to places that they shouldn't go, now they will learn to sit at home. All of a sudden, the husband will start spending more time with the wife. All of a sudden, the children will start seeing more of their mother because of coronavirus. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Because without coronavirus, the father may be in the beer parlor. The mother may be somewhere selling something. But now that coronavirus is in town, the family is spending more time together. I pray for somebody here that may God shake your life 
such that everything that is not profitable to your destiny shall be removed in Jesus' name. I say it one more time. May God Almighty cause a crisis in your life that will bring you back to the things that matter in life. Psalm 119 verse 71. Psalm 119 verse 71. It says, it is good that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Think about it. The psalmist said, Father, I thank you for afflicting me. I thank you for making life hard for me. Because in the purpose of your afflicting me, I have discovered your statutes. I don't know who God is talking to right now. But wherever you are, may that crisis you are going through, that problem you are going through, may it push you closer to God in Jesus' name. I say it one more time. May it push you closer to God in Jesus' name. Because of coronavirus, many people that used, that were not praying before have suddenly become prayer warriors. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Before, they, they, were not, they didn't find time to pray. But now, they have rediscovered the life of prayer. I say it one more time. For the sake of your destiny, may God shake your own life so that the things that are not important to your destiny will be cut off in Jesus' name. Number four, when God shakes the earth, Important things get attention. Important things get attention. So not only the things that are not important that will get removed, but the things that are important will all of a sudden get more attention. Like I explained a few minutes ago, you will suddenly discover that cinema houses we have less customers you, you will suddenly discover that beer palace we have less customers you will suddenly discover that brothels where you go and spend time with prostitutes will suddenly become empty and people will start looking for God People will start spending quality time with their family. I say it one more time. May the crisis you are having, it may not be coronavirus, but whatever problem you are having, may it take you away from things that are not good for your destiny. And may it open your eyes to the things that you need to be able to succeed in life. I've mentioned it a few times before. In these few years that I've been a pastor, human beings are wisest on their deathbed. When you want to hear wisdom, go and sit beside somebody who is dying. Hello? When you want to hear real wisdom, go and sit next to somebody who is about to die in the next few hours then you will hear great wisdom. They will begin to tell you, remember your creator. They will begin to tell you, remember to spend time with your children. You will never find a dying man or a dying woman say to you, remember to work overtime at work. You will never find a dying person say to you, Drink as much beer as you can. Because it is in the moment of pain that wisdom grows. Rise on your feet and say, Daddy, increase my wisdom. Even in this crisis, increase my wisdom. Use coronavirus and every tribulation in my life Whatever problem I'm going through, use it to make me wiser. Cry to God. 
Use it to make me wiser. Whatever crisis I may be going through, Father, use it to make me wiser. And to focus on the things that are useful to my destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Number five, when God shakes the earth, it is time to bear one another's burdens. You see, when God shakes the earth, it is not the time for me, I, and myself. No. When God is shaking the world, it is time to bear one another's burdens. In this season of coronavirus, some people are more at risk than others. This is the time for every church, hear me, to reach out to the elderly. If there's any elderly member of your church, if there's any elderly person who live in the same estate with you, if there's any elderly person in your family, this is the time they need you. Because the risk to them is bigger than the risk to you. This is the time to bear one another's burdens. If there's somebody who is sick, this is the time to pay attention to them. Because coronavirus will kill them faster than it can harm you. Because they are sick already and their immune system is weak. When God shakes the heart, it is time to help somebody. So today I am announcing three categories of people. If you are in category one, you are 60 years or older, or you are sick, or you are indeed very poor, category number one. 60 years and above, you are sick or you are poor. Because even in this season, things will start getting more expensive. The people that could not feed themselves well before may die of salvation. Maybe they were able to eat two times before, but now because prices have increased, they can only eat once a day. If you are in category one, contact your house fellowship center. Let them know your name and your situation. And we will reach out and help you. Category two, you are able to help. You are in a situation to help somebody financially or you just want to be able to call. You know, you can't go out much now. Neither can I. But you have the anointing to talk on the phone. You are really anointed to talk on the phone. Jesus needs you now. Jesus needs you. This is a time that you also tell your house fellowships. Say, I am available. I'm available to call and encourage people. We will give you the names of people that just need to be called and encouraged. In this season, it is time to be one family. It is time to be stronger together than we used to be. Don't sit in the comfort of your home and say, well, let everybody take care of themselves. So if you are willing to be used, you want to use your phone to call and encourage somebody, or you want to donate money to help the sick, to help the poor, please contact your house fellowship center. And then category three, you are a worker in the house of God. And you have challenges yourself. Contact the church office. Contact the church office. This is a time that we need to help one another. When God causes a shaking, there are some people that will be seriously hit. Yesterday, my wife wanted to buy something for the house. When they told her the price, she shouted. And I told her, no need to shout. You haven't seen anything yet. Because the price they just told you now, when you call in two hours' time or three hours' time, that price may be different. This is the time 
that Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 talked about. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. May God use you during this season to feed somebody. May God use you during this season to call the elderly and say, Mommy, I'm just checking on you. Are you okay, man? Daddy, are you okay? Daddy, do you need some help? Do you need some food? This is the time to bear one another's burdens. And may God find you available in Jesus' name. Second to the last, number six. When God causes a shaking. When God shakes the earth, it is for a season. It won't last forever. It won't last forever. Our God is a merciful God. The Lord is shaking the heart right now. But be, comf be comforted and be assured this won't last forever. You may not have a problem with coronavirus. You may have some other challenges in your life that you are dealing with right now. The word of God for you, it won't last forever. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 31 to 32. Lamentation 3, verse 31 to 32. Say, for the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he causes grief, listen very well. The Lord can cause grief. The Lord can cause problem. The Lord can cause crisis. The Lord can cause coronavirus. Though he causes grief, yet he will have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. I don't know what you are going through, but very soon you will experience the mercy of God. And I know that very soon the world, after we have learned our lessons, the God of mercy will restore our joy again. Psalm 30 verse 5 tells us, Psalm 30 verse 5, say the anger of the Lord is just for a moment. The Lord is angry with the world right now. Make no mistake about it. The Lord is seriously angry with the world. But he says in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I say to somebody right now, the night of your weeping is about to end. And the morning of your joy it's around the corner. Coronavirus is enjoying the night right now. But the morning is about to come. Because the God we serve is also a merciful God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And then finally, let me end with the most important message that the Lord wants you to hear this morning. When God shakes the heart. In Christ alone is safety. When God shakes the earth, in Christ alone is safety. Where is the army to fight coronavirus? Where is the navy? Where is the police? Where are the police officers? To help us fight coronavirus. Where are the guns? The machine guns. To fight coronavirus. Where are the ammo tanks? Maybe they can help us against coronavirus. Where is the intercontinental ballistic missile? My brothers and sisters. Where is the atomic bomb? All these things we have accumulated, they make us feel secure, but they are nothing when God shakes the heart. A simple, invisible virus 
and the superpowers of the world are confused, they are helpless, as their people die in their thousands. Because when God shakes the earth, safety exists only in the Lord. Proverbs 21, verse 31. Proverbs 21, verse 31. He said, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. You can buy a very good horse and a cart. Oh, I will go to war. But when you get to war, you will find out that the fact that you have a horse or you have bows and arrows does not mean you will come back alive. Here is the message for you from the Lord. You may not be dealing with coronavirus, but you may be dealing with the virus of divorce. You may be dealing with the virus of depression. You may be dealing with the virus of sickness. It's possible you are dealing with the virus of joblessness. Or maybe you are dealing with the virus of poverty. Or you are dealing with the virus of drug addiction. Or you are dealing with the virus of sexual immorality. Safety only is of the Lord. You want to surrender your life to Jesus this morning? I don't know what kind of virus you are going through. It may not be coronavirus. It may be any of these viruses that I've mentioned, the virus of depression, the virus of marital crisis, the virus of poverty, the virus of sickness. They will take the song. There's a song that they are going to play right now. It says, my trust is in you. And you arrive there somewhere around the world. You say, Pastor, I am the one the Lord is talking to. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. Lift up your hand and say after me, my Lord Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. Please save me. Help me. See me true, Lord. I put my confidence and my trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. As they play that song, my trust is in God. God bless you. Let's rise on our feet. Just rise on our feet and begin to say, Father, my trust is in you, Lord. My trust is in you, Lord. My trust is Rise on your feet wherever you are and say, My trust is in you, Lord. My trust is in you, Lord. My trust is in you, Lord. When God shakes the heart, in Christ alone is safety. Talk to the Lord. My trust is in you. Father, my trust is in you. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. Lord, my trust is in you. My trust is in you, Lord. When God shakes the heart, safety is only in Christ Jesus. The heart is prepared for the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Just lift up your hands and cry to God this morning. Cry to God and say, Lord, my trust is in you. My trust is in you. My trust is in you. When crisis comes, the police cannot help me. The soldier cannot help me. My money cannot help me. My education cannot help me. My wisdom cannot help me. My connections cannot help me. Lord, I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you. Just go ahead and cry to God. Go ahead and cry to God. My miracle walking God. My trust is in you.